Cannon and handgun, or arabesque, were used in small numbers through to the 15th century, where experience with the new technology began to turn the tide of conventional battles. The technology of metalwork improved along with the manufacture of cannon. Reduction in the size of barrels was accomplished along with the integration of trunnions, which projected from the sides of the cast barrel to allow attachment to a carriage. During the second half of the Hundred Years' War, artillery began to take effect. Battle commanders were learning how to use artillery effectively. Henry V at the Siege of Arfleur is an example. When his tunneling efforts failed to bring the walls down, he focused his cannon onto one wall flanking the gate. They had ten cannon, three of exceptional size. One was called London, another the King's Daughter. They were fired day and night for 27 days. Slowly they demolished the castle wall until a breach was made, at which point an incendiary round was fired into the exposed woodwork, and shortly after the breach was stormed and the town taken. The French caught on quickly and towards the end of the war became a superior artillery army. Frenchman Jean Bureau became the first great artilleryman. In 1449, he and his brother conducted 60 successful siege operations utilizing 250 cannon. His crossfire and enfilade with his field artillery caused heavy casualties amongst the English. The next innovative name was John Ziska, a Hussite from Bohemia. Leading an uprising, he and his 400 followers, together with 12 wagons carrying cannon, were able to defeat a much larger cavalry force. From there, the Catholic Church declared a crusade against him. A great thinker, Ziska had his cannon mounted to fire from the wagons and grouped them in a large circle on a hilltop, a very successful use of field artillery. With this technique, they were victorious in many battles. The war raged till 1436, when terms were agreed to by Rome. <laughs>